Ladies and gentlemen of the universe, tell me, what is it that you desire? A review of Lucifer Season 4? Well, allow me to oblige. Come join me as we dance with the devil. What's up guys and welcome to the Web's First a C Comic and Nerd Culture Show. Welcome to the Comic Universe. I'm Dr. J. I've got a PhD in Nerd Culture and I should know. I printed it out myself. So, what's up you guys and welcome back to Netflix and Beyond. I'm riding solo here on this video, of course. Like I said, it's Dr. J. And we are here to talk about the return of one of my favorite shows. Thanks to the revival of it by Netflix. So I waited about a week to give you guys time to watch it so I could go full on spoilery with this video. So that's your warning. We're going to talk full spoiler details, character developments, all that good stuff in this video. So if you have not fully caught up with Lucifer Season 4 and watched all 10 episodes and you happen to be a fan of this show, what are you doing? You definitely need to watch it because it was fantastic. Honestly, the best season of Lucifer yet so far, in my opinion. So if you have any inclination to liking this show, you need to do yourself a favor and watch season four. And if you were kind of interested in Lucifer before, and uh, you know now that you hear that there's a new season out, and you want to check it out, I highly recommend it. It is a very charming cop procedural if you like cop shows but you like that little mix of the supernatural in there it's got some nice allusions to judeo-christian mythology honestly it's a very very fun show tom ellis's charisma alone could carry it but they have so many great characters that it doesn't need to just be him so seriously guys go watch it if you haven't already but now we're gonna go into spoiler territory okay so Season 3 of Lucifer ends with Chloe finally seeing Lucifer's devil face after he kills Pierce. And, of course, she takes a vacation to kind of process this. And, basically, the first couple episodes are about Chloe still trying to figure out is Lucifer evil? Is he the devil that, you know, she's heard all her life about through religion, through pop culture, through society? Or is he the man that she knows from work that's helped her on cases, that saved her life, that genuinely cares about her and her friends, and has friends of his own? Like, you know, it's a definitely a lot to process. And one thing I will say about this season on Netflix that Netflix has made a lot better that I was very apprehensive about. So, they cut this season down from the normal network 20 episode season to the usual Netflix bingeable 10 episode season. And I was worried that cutting it down to 10 episodes might, like, ruin the pacing and, you know, make everything feel a little bit more rushed. But honestly, cutting it down to 10 really improved the pacing because... If we were in, like, the 20-episode arc that we were in on Fox, this whole ordeal with Chloe and Father McCullen would have been, like, half the season, and the other half would have dealt with the Eve stuff, and that would have just taken a bunch of filler. They really trimmed the fat on this season, and, like, it really picked up the pace. Like, you didn't really have time to slow down. I mean, that might have been, like... A tiny nitpick that I had with the season overall in terms of pacing, but still, I really enjoyed the quick pace. I thought it, it really kind of helped keep my attention and, like, really had me invested. Like, oh my god, what's gonna happen next? What's gonna happen next? What's gonna happen next? Like, that's what I really enjoyed about Netflix kind of taking the reins here. So that was pretty awesome. And you can tell that the writers kind of have cha changed things up a little bit to more fit Netflix instead of just trying to accommodate to like their network style and just because it's on Netflix Lucifer doesn't try to be extra edgy right it still stays the same amount of humor the same risque jokes but never goes too far 
I mean, you see a butt a couple of times, but like other than that, there's nothing that really like pushes the envelope that says, "Oh, we're on Netflix now. We can do this." They don't even like drop an f bomb or anything. So that's kind of crazy. That was pretty um, interesting, though. I'm glad they haven't changed just because they're on Netflix. Like Lucifer kept what the show is and just kind of changed networks, which is great. That's what all Netflix shows should do uh, when shows are dropped by other networks and picked up by Netflix. I think that was dope. So back to Chloe. Um, She eventually realizes that Lucifer is a good person and that she should give him a chance. But, you know, it's interrupted by the arrival of, co- of, of course, Eve. Yeah, that's right, Eve, as in the first woman, the woman that Lucifer tempted to get the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Turns out that fruit wasn't really an apple, it was uh, more of a banana. In Eve's words, a very large banana. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you, uh... Leave that to your imaginations. But, yeah. So, honestly, I really like the introduction of Eve. Eve is so freaking adorable. Not just, like, sexy as hell, because, yes, obviously. But she is so freaking adorable because, again, she's so naive to the world of mortals. And she's been in heaven for so long that she's only really heard stories about Earth from the people in heaven, and she wants to basically just sneak down to Earth and party with her ex, and it's really cute. Obviously, again, her naivete gets her into trouble, and she does some very stupid, very questionable decisions, but she's so damn cute with those big puppy dog eyes. Can you even really be mad at her? Like, it's so hard to stay mad at Eve, man. She's just so damn cute. And she's friends with everybody. That's the thing that I also like, right? Like, you've got Chloe and Eve, who both clearly have feelings for Lucifer. But Chloe and Eve can still be friends. And it's awesome. It's great. I really enjoyed that a lot. And Eve's personal character arc is very satisfying. At first, you know, you think she's in love with Lucifer, but really, as the series goes on, she learns to find out that Lucifer isn't what she's in love with. She was in love with who she was with Lucifer and how free she felt when she was with Lucifer. But she doesn't really know who she is as a person because she was literally created for somebody. She hasn't got to experience anything on her own. She never got to make any decisions for herself because, you know, God and Adam made all those decisions for her. So now she's kind of going off to find herself and get her shit together, which, you know, is something we all go through as humans. And that's pretty interesting. And also, I'm glad it leaves the door open for her to come back because I would love to have more Eve, especially the Maeve ship. I really want her and Maze to get together because, you know, Maze's whole character arc is kind of discovering that what she really wants in life is human connection. She sees that Amenadiel has that with um, Lydia and she sees that Lucifer and Chloe obviously have that. And she has, like, the friendship with Trixie, but she wants something more. And, you know, again, it's a very human thing for a demon to go through. And I think that was really fun and really interesting. And her huge romantic gesture for Eve with her singing Wonderwall was amazing. And, like, I can't believe Eve was just like, that's it. I know exactly what you mean, Maves. And she's like, really? And she's like, yes, I'm going to do a big romantic gesture for Lucifer. I felt so bad for Maze, man. Felt so bad. That was, oh, man. So moving on to Lydia and Amenadiel, I want to talk about that. So we get the big reveal that Linda is pregnant with Amenadiel's baby. So they're going to have themselves a little angel baby. They end up having baby Charlie and Amenadiel actually gets to experience what Earth is like for young black men and how hard 
life is and how they can easily be misjudged and mistreated for no other reason than the color of their skin. And this kind of shakes him in a deal to his core because, you know, he's from the idyllic silver city of heaven where no judgment really exists. And so that scares him. So he's like, maybe I should take my sister's advice and raise my son in the silver city. But then I'd be taking him away from Linda and, you know, he should be able to develop this humanity because humanity is such a beautiful thing. Even with all the bad, humans are such beautiful creatures with their flaws and free will. It's just really interesting to see a man, a deal, a person who, you know, in the first couple seasons was very much like looking down on humans now really appreciating what humanity has to offer and that's great and i loved that arc for him especially you know after him losing charlotte in the end of season three even though you know charlotte was dan's girl but like charlotte was his friend as well and of course you know the vessel to his mom so means a lot and then to lose this friend that he made that was kind of a surrogate son to him along the way definitely shook him but then he realized after what linda said about how you know together we can do anything we can raise this baby to help this world and you know it's gonna be beautiful us being together and that's when he's like no i couldn't do it and then, you know, it comes to the whole plot where Charlie gets kidnapped by Lucifer's demons so that they can try and raise Charlie to be the next king of hell. And that's when Lucifer has the big realization of what he needs to do. And we'll get to Lucifer towards the end. Let's quickly t talk about Ella. Man, Ella is my personal favorite character. I love Ella Lopez. Freaking Amy Garcia is amazing. She is hilarious. And... She has a crisis of faith this entire season because of what happened to Charlotte. And just someone who is trying to turn their life around and be better and, you know, get in better with the big guy, you know, so that she wouldn't go to hell, so that she would go to heaven, which she does end up going to heaven. Although, of course, you know, Ella doesn't know that. But somebody who did all that good and was trying to be better just suddenly got cut down for no reason that of course shakes ella's faith and she has this whole big crisis where she for a period just stops believing and you know that broke my heart because ella in a cast full of a lot of cynics and and skeptics and optimist or pessimist ella was the one optimist she was the ray of sunshine and so like, to see her kind of spiral like this, it was just, it was very, again, humanizing. And that's kind of the thing about Lucifer is it definitely highlights a lot about humanity. And it's really awesome. I just, I loved Ella's arc here. It was a lot of fun. And I'm glad that she's starting to get back to normal, having her faith restored, putting her crucifix back on at the last episode. So, great for Ella. Now, let's quickly talk about Detective Douche himself, Dan Espinoza. Dan, 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 Dan. Man, I understand you. Dan was grieving throughout the entire season after Charlotte's loss. Because, you know, after so much time of not letting Charlotte in after she completely rejected him because... You know, the goddess left her body and uh, the regular Charlotte had no memory of who he was. But then she ends up falling for him anyway. But right when they start to fall in love again, that's when he's taken from Charlotte. Or I guess Charlotte was taken from him. And so this whole time he kind of is looking for somebody to blame. And looking for these different outlets to kind of grieve and process and for the longest time, he just blames Lucifer because he just needs somebody to blame. He needs somebody to pin it on so he doesn't accept it himself and so that he can just stay and wallow in this grief and depression. And while I was frustrated with Dan, I totally understood where he was coming from. And again, that's just another thing, right? Like, 
that's just a part of being human. And that's why, like, I love all these characters, man. They're so flawed and they're so human. And that's what makes Lucifer such a good show. Not only is it entertaining, but it's so relatable in so many different ways. And that's why I love it. So now, let's talk about the man himself, Lucifer Morningstar. So, Lucifer, his whole journey throughout the entire show has really been about forgiveness. Because, you know, everybody portrays Lucifer as this, you know, cheating, lying, manipulative bastard. But really, Lucifer is someone who bears the guilt of the entire world on his shoulders. Because, like Dan did with Lucifer, everyone blames everything bad in the entire world on the devil. Tempting Eve, the original sin, the rebellion against God, all of it was blamed on Lucifer when Lucifer had good intentions, but everything went sideways, and so they blamed it all on him. And all that blame, all that guilt was piled on him and which is why he made himself the way he is why he created the devil face it's because that's how he felt about himself and it wasn't until he learned to want to start forgiving himself that he started coming back to his more angelic roots and keeping his devil side under control and you know forgiving yourself is one of the hardest journeys for anyone but can you imagine Somebody who has the guilt of everyone that's in hell and a majority of the human race, if not all of it. Like, that's a lot. That's human and angel kind, man. Like, Lucifer has a lot of pressure to go through. And then eventually he realizes, like, again, that he needs to forgive himself and that it's just not about him, right? There is a bigger picture, and he does need to serve it if it means saving the people he cares about. And so, at the end of the season, he decides to finally go back to hell and sit back atop of the throne so that none of the demons would come after him or come after Charlie because they won now, but now that they know he's here, they're not going to stop until he comes back. So, Lucifer, the quote-unquote most selfish creature in all of creation, sacrificed everything he built, all his happiness, his friends, his family here, in order to keep them safe and let them be happy. Man... That is some major character growth, and bravo to the writers of this show, to Tom Ellis. This was phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. I cannot praise this show enough. Like I said, go watch Lucifer Season 4. It's amazing. But let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments down below. Obviously, I loved it, but what did you guys think? Tell us in the video's comments. Don't forget to leave this video a like to let us know you enjoyed it. And if you do desire to, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time we upload new videos. You know, we got a lot of great content coming for you guys, myself, C-Dubs, and DPZ. I hope you guys have been enjoying those Days Gone streams that, you know, C-Dubs has been doing. Those have been a lot of fun. I occasionally pop into those in the chat. So definitely stay tuned for the rest of our content. But I hope you had a good time with this review. And uh, next time, I hope to see you in the universe. And maybe we'll get to dance with the devil in the pale moonlight. Alright, peace.